In 1981, when our next guests were 12 years old, they saw a film that made them really want to go out and make movies. That film was Raiders of the Lost Ark, directed by Steven Spielberg. And after seeing it, Chris Strompolis and Eric Zala embarked on a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the entire film with the help of their friend Jason Lamb operating a Betamax video camera. Here's a clip from Raiders of the Lost Ark adaptation. <laughs> With us are Chris Strompolis and Eric Zala of Rolling Boulder Films, also known as the Raiders Guys, taking a characteristically dramatic entrance. Chris and Eric, nice to meet you guys. Thanks for joining us on this Spartan Life. Hey, good to meet you too. So if we wander around a bit here, it's easier to avoid the stray explosions. That sounds good. So your film is really drawing some big crowds. That's great. I get the feeling it's striking a chord with people who are just as taken with your story, you know, three kids who undertook this giant project, as they are with the Raiders story itself. So Chris, can you tell us where this whole thing started for you? Um, back in 1981, July of 81, I was 11 years old, um, saw the movie and I loved the whole world that Indiana Jones represented to me and I wanted nothing more than to wear the jacket and put on the hat and play with the bullwhip and be that hero. and, and just sort of, it was really born out of a oh, fantasy. Crap. Look out! What the hell, Fiber? Hey man, I'm sorry, I thought I was out of grenade. You're supposed to be a bodyguard. That's like the opposite of bodyguard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now I gotta go find them again. Ah, oh, there you are. Okay, great. Sorry about that, Eric. Mistakes were made, as they say. Rather unseemly. Where's Chris? Oh, here he is. Hey, okay, I'm, I'm here now. <laughs> it's my apologies, Chris. You were starting to tell us about what made you decide to remake a $20 million movie in your backyard. Why didn't you guys remake a, an easier movie from that year? You know, like My Dinner with Andre. <laughs> I mean, didn't budget enter the picture at some point? Uh, well, when we started when we were 12, we certainly weren't sophisticated enough to, uh, to think in terms of budget. So what we did was uh, basically devote all our allowance to it. So uh, holidays and birthdays became prop acquiring opportunities. Okay, Chris, you ask for the hat. For Christmas, for my birthday, I'll ask for the bullwhip, and uh, that's really how we got things, you know, when you're a broke kid in Mississippi and 12 years old. So is it difficult getting adults to take you guys seriously as filmmakers at 12 years old? Didn't you need, whoa, needlers at 3 o'clock. So what about that, Chris? Didn't you need cooperation from adults occasionally? No, we had a lot of support from our moms. I mean, uh, Eric's mom let us take over the house and my mom was incredibly supportive and uh, I, I think as the years went by and we became more obsessive about it people realized that we weren't going to stop but the adults weren't like gently trying to discourage you um we had some suggestions from our parents when eric and i started to tackle some of the more dangerous things with fire and stunts and <laughs> suggestions like don't burn down the house or <laughs> i read on the raider.net about your notorious fire scene in eric's basement it was right underneath the kitchen, and uh, Eric's mom, thank goodness, had no idea what we were doing. So that was like your soundstage, Eric's basement? Yeah, exactly. And as I understand it, fire wasn't even the most dangerous part. I mean, there are other scenes that you had to remake from the film that I imagine were pretty scary to a pre-adolescent male actor. <laughs> Am I right, Chris? Well, I mean, at the experienced age, I think, of 12 or 13, I hadn't yet kissed a girl. So it wasn't only the first time that I'd ever kissed a girl on camera, it's really the first time I'd ever kissed a girl, period. And um, it was a closed set, so that meant Eric kicked his little brother out of the room. And uh, yeah, it was captured on classic 1980s Betamax video forever. And didn't you keep forgetting your lines because of nervousness? That was when, uh, that's when Ms. Marion is, is tied to a pole in a tent, and, and Indy has to come in. He comes to the tent and discovers that she's still alive and, and takes her, her mouth band off and, and kisses her. Well. I kept screwing up my lines, and so we, we did it over and over and over and over again. Stop, man. You're making Eric blush. Look at this. I mean, what would your mom have thought if she walked in the middle of that scene, you know, with a girl tied to a pole and Chris standing there with a bullwhip? So tell us what's happening now. What projects are you guys currently involved in? Well, we've just, in the past week, begun pitching around Los Angeles a new action-adventure script that uh, we've been working on for the past three years. It's a southern gothic action adventure, and it's sort of jam-packed with all the things that we love about the adventure genre. 
So yeah, we're we're doing that and uh, and actually taking a number of meetings while we're uh, here in Los Angeles and. Uh, it's, it's amazing the doors that uh, this little film we did when we were kids has opened. Whoa, sniper! Go ahead, Chris, he's all yours. Nice one. We're kind of out here in the open, I guess. Let's get some shelter. The other thing I wanted to ask you guys is how you feel about the ways that digital media tools have spawned all this user-generated content on the Internet. You know, from like YouTube, to remixed videos, to Machinima. How would access to these tools in the 80s have changed what you guys did back then? I think maybe it would have caused us to be less resourceful. I mean, I, I think not having those tools really, for Eric and I, I think back in the 80s, it, it, it forced us to kind of go out and make stuff and find stuff and ask people for stuff. And that's still really what, what filmmaking is all about. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you could have these tools and still be using them to you know, document the explosive qualities of Mentos, which many have. On the other hand, don't 12-year-olds today have ways to get their videos seen immediately and get feedback in ways that you guys didn't? Yeah. Um, I think the arena of filmmaking, certainly in the digital age, has opened up considerably, and, that, and that's about the distribution of entertainment and getting your stuff seen and, and viral videos and the whole YouTube culture and the MySpace culture and, and really networking with a community. I mean, I think, I think the community and the access to information and getting feedback on your movies are all positive, absolutely. Yeah, one of my favorite examples of that is Alex Chan, who saw the riots happening in his neighborhood in Paris a few years back and made a machinima film about it, and then it's all over the Internet, you know, a few days later. So maybe for him it was this political thing happening in his life, and for others maybe it's a new film that comes out, like it was for you guys, you know, that inspires them to create their own. I think it's really key as to whether or not there are films out there that would really put the fire in the belly. Um, I think that's, that's really the, the most important thing. Is there something there that really inspires the kids to... <laughs> be foolish and put all your money towards uh, towards this project. Well, speaking of being foolish, we'd be remiss if we didn't devise some kind of fun for you guys here in Halo. So we thought we'd go over to another map for a little warthog rally. That that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, they think it sounds fun. All right, Raiders, the object is for you to take down as many gamers as possible while they try to dodge your warthogs. And what do you think, Fiber? Should we throw in a few obstacles here and there? Hell yeah. They're not getting off that easy. All right, take it away, guys. <laughs> Utter carnage. <laughs> Got to do the trash talk. I'm still feeling kind of slightly resentful that Fiber Optic blew me up when the interview started. Driving guys, Chris and Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Great man. Hey, it's been our pleasure. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark adaptation is currently showing in limited screenings around the country. There's a schedule you can check out on theraider.net. And for you Halo fans, let's just say there's another kind of Lost Ark coming to an Xbox near you on September 25th. Woohoo!